Yo guys, what is up? Welcome back to some more Zero Hour. Welcome back to the World Series 2023. I'm back here today with a round number one. Up in the north, we have the blue player of the China Infantry. This is Pepsi. Down in the south, we have the red player with a super weapon. This is Basie 655. So, Pepsi actually got quite a high seeding in the World Series. I think he got like seed 7 or 8, but the way he got that was by winning a best of one tournament. So there's like a mini one day tournament where you literally play all your games in one day, a mini tiny little tournament. And uh, yeah, he must have just won all of his games. A best of one means you literally play one game and you eliminate another player. Boyka took part in that tournament and uh, Pepsi eliminated him and uh, eliminated several other people as well. And bagged himself a guaranteed spot seven or eight. I personally in the future would like to see the seedings done a little bit differently. For example, I would like it literally to be a, a 1v1 ladder in the previous month. And who, however the rankings finish, 1 to 30 or 1 to 64 or whatever, is literally how the players get seeded. Because currently it's done a bit all over the place. You can win a best of one and bag yourself a 7 or 8 when you might not necessarily be a rank 7 or 8. First unit out for Bayzy is a full V. He's going for a no eco and he's going for a helix. This is weird, man. Why are they both going for all ins? Is this what the World Series does? Is this what the pressure... Is this what the pressure does to people? It's, it's hard as the super weapon here. I think it's a lot easier as the infantry. But is it necessary to go one supply helix for the infantry? That is the question. I know eco generally struggles here because the tank hunters are vetted. And if you just make like five tank hunters, it just counters it. Helix has moved in. There's no laser lock whatsoever from Bayzy. And the helix is just wrecking the base. This is going to be a fast and ferocious game. So one supply build and his whole base is basically going to die in a second. Basically needs to start placing buildings down now on the right side of the spare dozer. Doesn't really matter about what's going on with the no eco. Uh, Lay's lock needs to be instantaneous but it's not and that is GG though. Well, that's like one of the most ferocious games I've seen. <laughs> like like ever not just in the world series so far just like ever a helix versus a no eco like the, the infantry doesn't need to take such risks i don't think if you fly into an emp or a, or a, a precision laser lock you can go down you can just make war factory barracks and it's generally easier but i don't know man it, it works it worked there one zero there for pepsi very convincing okay second match now with the super weapon in the blue down in the south this is pepsi and up in the top with the red China infantry is Basie 655. Uh, very bad dozer there. It did loads of twists and turns there when actually if you wait till the dozer spawns, clear mines over here and then build a barracks, you'll build that barracks like, I don't know, 50% or even 100% quicker. All those twists and turns which were there just slow your build down like that supply should already be building you know what i mean it just it's all, all has a knock-on effect these these first units would otherwise like be here if you didn't do those twists and turns tiny little things like this at the top level in the world series are going to make a difference trust me pepsi has opted to go two supplies and double barracks So, a very different game to the first game. Yeah, it's hard as the super weapon because if the if the infantry does go a helix, even if you see it coming in plain sight, it's still very hard to deal with. Like, this build order here would probably still get wrecked by a helix because you can just fly all, all the way over to his left side, go in the back, pick off the dozer, pick off the chinooks. It's very, very hard. Even with the double barracks and missile defenders everywhere, you're not going to always be able to have enough missile defenders to laser lock it. Helix can also, uh, with a minigunner, just pick them all off. But we're not seeing Helix anyway. We're going for a war factory and a barracks. And the first outpost, generally, in my view, that needs to have some more units in it. It needs to have, like, it needs to be full of tank hunters and maybe two minigunners. 
basie has gone for the oils. It's pretty a pretty quick oil cap there, but it means his first attack is going to be weaker, which is why it's empty. I know eco for this super weapon actually might have worked pretty nice here because you deny the oils, you'd be able to go in around the back, pick off them trucks, come in with the other V, go, go in there and pick off those trucks. This isn't going to achieve so much because as soon as that gets popped open, three tank hunters against all these flashbangs from the different sides. Needs to laser lock that ASAP. Oh man, he's not laser locked it. He could get hunted here now because he hasn't laser locked that. Although this is a bit of a wonky. Uh... Oh, what's he doing? Oh. I mean, he still might get the hunt because he's got units coming in from here and he's got these here. These units need to be doing something, yep. Even if you lose one Chinook as the super weapon, it's very, very painful. $1,200, expensive to replace. Your Vs are expensive as well at 850. But these units can be doing more. Like, he's just running and just dying. Like, you, you could have probably picked off those, could have maybe done a little bit of damage to the Vs. Sometimes they're just running and doing nothing. Okay, three outposts now coming in. But again, I think they are mostly just three tank hunters. So as soon as they get popped open, the flashbang rangers do splash damage here, and these do all take a lot of damage very quick. There's still one V went down, and there's still a mini gonna sneak it in. These tank hunters are all getting handled. So far, the infantry is on three supplies and two oils. Rest of this now is getting cleared up. The Vs now have the tow upgrades. So it should be easier to deal with oncoming attacks. But economically, he's behind. He already lost one Chinook, and he's two oils down, plus one supply down. So, like, the the infantry basically has double the economy. He's just killed a V there without the napalm. Nice kill. Basie now going for an extra war factory and a prop at the same time. Outpost around the back means the super weapon is not collecting again. And uh, so that means he's just on one supply. Meanwhile, the infantry is still on three supplies and one oil. One has been captured back. Uh, I think he... Oh, no, he's not dozed him. There's one doze left. Oh, Oh, man. Like he's losing ranges there for no reason. It's just an empty half-dead outpost. Mig's now coming in. Does he have napalm? Yes, he does. Those two Vs should go down if that's the, unless he presses X. Doesn't press X. I think he's looking pretty comfortable for the infantry. Supply on the left-hand side. It's going to capture that oil back. I mean, it's okay to waste the outpost as long as you evac beforehand because you don't want to... Get it popped open, and then all the units go to half HP. Okay, Chinook moving in, but I think Basie has spotted it. Should have probably waited for it to land, though, because now the MiGs have landed. That can actually do some damage. Should wait for it to land, then hit whatever pops out with the MiGs. A better way of dealing with it. Loses one MiG for it. Losing the Chinook. Other MiG escapes. But I think the super weapon at this point is getting overrun a little bit too much. Mix coming in. As well as this ground army. And that's looking pretty rough for the super weapon. So I mean, it's just hard for the super weapon. The super weapon definitely has to work harder and play smarter here. Just There's just too much money for the infantry at this stage. He's making ranges. Meanwhile, he needs to actually laser lock that. He will kill the Flamer, but he's going to lose another Missile Defender and a Ranger. ECM going to get picked up here. Basie's flowing 6.5k. 
That that should be spamming the whole time. Which I think it mostly is. Pepsi's definitely giving it a good go. Definitely trying to win here, but still the infantry is just too strong and got too much momentum. Yeah, I actually think that no eco, which is basically two full Vs and an Ambo, would have actually probably worked nice here. Because you could have gone around the back, picked off the supply, picked off the supplies, trucks, maybe those are hunted him, and then just gone back to your base and played out a normal game, trying to camp it out with fire bases and flashbangs. Might have been able to work, but um, that didn't happen. It goes 1-1. One, one. Okay, jumping into the next match. We're on Sand Scorpion. Down at the bottom right, we've got the blue USC Air Force for Pepsi. Up at the top left, we've got the red China Vanilla for Basie 655. Again with these dozers. I mean, that didn't work out so bad, but you can see all the twists and turns. It doesn't take too much effort to find any replay or stream of any expert player, and you're always seeing them use the clear minds function. So a little bit of lack of homework there from Basie 655. Pepsi going for a one supply build, but the way he's done it in between, I'm imagining he's probably going to go for three Chinooks. Um, Air Force. Oh, he's going for an airfield as well. Okay. So Firebase at the front. Oil, oil. And he's just not contesting the middle oil. Uh, what is he going to make from the one airfield? Into a second barracks. Okay. Not sure I love this build order from Pepsi. Well, I mean, he's probably going to get two oils, but sometimes the China likes to send an additional red guard over there. I actually think that one should have been the one to go over there. It would have denied this, and then the, the, the Air Force would have been on one oil, one airfield. And he's making a wrap, but a wrap doesn't one-shot this. But the China's probably going to make Gats anyway. You're not By making the Raptors, it's not like you're forcing him to make Gats and then you make these or something. It's, mm, he's going to try to go for the Dozer Hunt. Split fire. Split fire. Going to lose the wrap though. And now the China's going to get annoyed. That's a good pick off there from Basie, picking it off on the exit. But now the China's going to get annoyed and rally a million units down the middle. And then you still have a chance of losing. And he's just lost a second wrap there for free. Uh, yeah, a little bit weird here from Basie. Uh, sorry, from uh, Pepsi. Bear in mind that that could have been denied as well. So this could be actually not going that great for uh, the Air Force. Still think it's looking a little bit dodge. He's going to probably use another Raptor here. Yeah, it's, it's just weird. It's unnecessary. You've got the strongest army in the game versus the supposed weakest army in the game. Air Force being the strongest. And uh, I just I don't, know, I don't know. Is the Dozer Hunter necessary? Saying that, China does have probably more success on this map than he does on other ones. Because of the, the funneled positions. You can just rally a load of tank hunters and a troop crawler and it generally does pretty good. Just attack move straight down the middle and it does pretty good. Uh, he's coming in with mix. No napalm again, though. I mean, if he upgrades the napalm now, they actually get napalm reloaded whilst they're in the air. So that could be good. He did pick off a V. Yeah, that, that guy just needs to be sent back and repaired. Another barracks. That's a three barracks build from Pepsi. I am missing ta uh, more tank hunters and I'm missing troop crawlers and napalm. Uh, base is also flowing cash, so he could be making helixes with Gatling cannons and getting mines as well. There's no reason why you should be flowing 5.7k here. Flamer coming through the middle. I think these have got flashbangs inside, so that obviously needs to be flushed out by the uh, Flamer. There's two tank... Uh, sorry, two MDs in the front one, actually. OK, 
Okay, that's pretty good. Flamer still might die, though. No, he's not retargeted. Look at all these tank enters now. Loses another wrap. Hmm, it, it's honestly very sloppy. I <laughs> feel like lately I'm criticizing a lot um, in some of these games, but... I mean, it's just the honest truth. If you did this against an expert player, you 100% would be losing. Uh, strongest army versus the weakest army. Um, like, sloppy with the wraps, unnecessary build. Unnecessary doze hunt, really. And now he, he's he's losing here. I mean, he, st he still might win. He's still <laughs> F-Force has still always got a chance. He's about to get search and destroy. But it's looking a bit sloppy here against the China Vanilla when it should be it should be clinical really. If you, if you have any hope of winning the World Series, honestly, it should be clinical. Still no napalm is just weird. And still no helixes. Even if they were just to run to their death by the Raptors, like you need to spend your cash. Well, it's giving me no more air units. And yeah, I suppose search and destroy Vs could probably. Could probably just ensure this uh, this is a victory now. Because it's only going to be Gats and Tankens, I suppose. But it's just... How many Gats has killed uh, Raptors this time? Uh, War Factory taken out. Yeah, how, how many Raps have gone down in this game? He's level 3 now, so if he builds a CC uh, and gets uh, Pathfinders as well. This, this should be... Um it should, still should be a win here from the Air Force. He's been feared, yeah. I suppose Pepsi in the end still gets the win. The only reason we're being critical is because when he comes up against an expert level China, uh, that's too sloppy in my opinion to get the win. But Pepsi does get the win there. But yeah, a little bit, um, little bit dodgy in places. But either way, it's still two one. He's still in the lead. Okay, jumping into the next one. Pepsi will now play with a weaker army, which is China Vanilla up in the top left of Sand Scorpion with the blue color. Down at the bottom right, we have the red. Basie 655 with the strongest army in the game, USA Air Force. But yeah, like I said, on, on Sand Scorpion, China does have more success than you see on, a, on other maps. When it's like um, uh, Vendetta, for example, when the map's nice and open, Vs can go anywhere. Um, I think China struggles more so, or like Desolated District and stuff like that. But with this one, you do have the uh, uniqueness of the, the funneling down the three channels. And therefore, yeah, Vs do sometimes run into a blob of tank enters. And I think for that reason, China does have a little bit more success. Spazy's going for a one supply build again as the Air Force. And he's moving in to try and drop something. He's dropping a dozer. There's a lot of red guards coming out of um, Pepsi. He's going for a double barracks build. Means he wants that capture upgrade ASAP. Baze has gone into a wolf actually from this point. This Chinook needs to be doing something because all that time he's not collecting and now he's losing HP on it. He's maybe even going to lose it.
Okay, cats are picked off pretty efficiently there by Bazy. He only has one oil. Pepsi so far has one oil also, but it looks like he's going to try to get this top one. Pepsi also expanded down in the bottom left. I think he's going to drop a bunker somewhere here. Yep. But he could have done that a little bit further forward. And then the Vs wouldn't be able to come in here at all. Either way, it's still in play. Basie now moving in with his Vs. He's going to go and try and deny this, but he's a little bit slow there. The Red Guard do get the oil. Basie's going to try and get himself another oil. He's still on uh, one supply. Building a strap. He's now moving slightly back. Uh, these missile defenders are in danger, though. Just one red guard. Or even if them full gas move in and now, or even that MiG. I don't know if it was worth doing that. But Napalm's already researched, and the V's not moving. Loses two V's there, and loses these MDs. So looking pretty comfortable, I think, for Pepsi here is the China Vanilla. Maybe going for the Dozer is <laughs> something uh, Bayzy should have employed here, actually. Oh, he's actually getting harassed in the back by a gap. Actually not collecting at the minute. Now putting him back. No supply lines upgrade. I would recommend probably getting that. And there's still a crate here. Yeah, yeah. Nice. So he's putting that back. But now the MiGs are out. That's uh, pretty dangerous, actually. Maybe that's what Pepsi didn't want to face in the previous game. He didn't want to face the Napalm Mix. So we're going for the Dozer. Actually, he could have still been against Napalm Mix, couldn't he? But basically just didn't research it in the previous Yeah, it's looking like uh, China's OP here. I think China can expand down to this bottom left more easily than the Air Force. The supplies build quicker, and they're only 1,500. And the trucks are only 600 compared to uh, Chinooks, which are basically 50% more expensive than that. Mig's now coming in from Pepsi. Uh, he's going for one dozer. Did he already get the other one? Looks like he did, so I think Bayzy is dozed now. Pepsi liking this dozer hunting strategy. So the MiGs, probably their next target, will be to come in exactly that same angle and just finish off that strat. Because you take away the search and destroy, the 20% extra range, and suddenly the uh, these flamers are doing a lot better against the Vs. Yeah, I personally think the China Vanilla has won here because he just has too much economy. The, the, the mix. Uh, base is coming in for some kind of a drop, but it's just in plain sight. In fact, the MIGs are right there anyway. So unless Pepsi's literally not even looking at his screen. I mean, he just ran into Gats anyway. Nah, this is, yeah, the MIGs coming to finish off the strat. Daisy is getting picked apart. I am afraid. Ooh. The guy actually survives and manages to do some harassment. There's another guy coming in. Yeah, Pepsi is uh, playing a different class here with the China Vanilla. A lot of gats moving down the middle. Uh, the Avengers are moving to the front line, and that is not recommended against that many gas. These are very expensive units. There's a Flamer here as well from Pepsi. She's pumping out loads of units from this extra war factory he's built down the bottom left. And, yeah, Basie's only got a few seconds, I think, left in this particular game. Mix coming in. 
Oh, that's painful. If this is this whole thing is just a demolition job, basically. And Pepsi gets another win on the board. 3-1 is going to be the score. Okay, jumping into the next match. This time we've got down in the bottom left, the purple player with the USA Laser. This is Pepsi. Up in the top right, we got the red GLA Stealth. This is Basie 655. Winnable both ways this, so you probably, providing you're comfortable in this, Stealth against Laser, you're probably um, quite happy with that because Winnable is both as the Stealth and as the Laser. Uh, Pepsi. Okay, I thought he was going to go for something weird then, like a three supply build, but he's actually just boxing in his dozer on this position. The the weird thing here is that eventually these crates will get mined out, and uh, then it, the dozer will be exposed. But by that point, you're hoping the dozer hunt will no longer be a thing. Like the dozer hunt, if it's going to come, will probably be in the first open in five minutes, something like that. Of course, it still can happen later, but. Yeah, you, it might be actually be an option to collect off that one and that one first so that this chain is not broken. Or you might drop an additional power or something and reinforce the box. Okay, nice sneaky tunnel there from Bayesley. has not occupied that, which might lead a V to run straight into that tunnel. So I do kind of like that when players just literally hide it completely. Because cur currently you're not going to go there because you see that and you see that and you know there's going to be a tunnel there. Whereas if you just completely hide it, there's more chance a V might run into it. It's going to be a TNT being prepared by Bayesley 655. Barracks being built by Pepsi up on the top left. A little bit strange. TNT. Oh, it's actually a tech RPG. Okay. Gets stopped, though. It doesn't kill anything. Here's the TNT, though. So that was the distraction, which has worked nicely. But Pepsi, rather than sending two units there to stop a worker, should be focusing now on the TNT, because it's, pre it's pretty common. In Tech RPG, TNT, most games, just look out for those two things. So, yeah. Th those V's put there were pointless, because he, he didn't even stop the worker. <laughs> and he's now lost the supply. But, yeah, he's built this in the top left. But it's a little bit strange. Because you've invested 600 there, and you've got a dozer there as well. And if the uh, if the technical just gets put there, this this oil can be denied. So potentially investing money that's going to get no return. Perhaps you're going to lose a chinook. I suppose it's a spare chinook anyway, because he's going to have to rebuild that supply and he's going to get an extra one from it. It's got loads of V's now. Tunnel gets cleared. Tech RPG coming in. He is going for the dozer hunt. Uh, there is currently one still at the top left. That one actually escapes. The V army coming back to clear this up. So, so far, out of all the technical attacks, the only thing he's gained really is killing the supply. That's the only meaningful impact. I mean, he damaged the V, he's damaged the dozer. This one's not collecting for a second. But I think the GLA needs to be doing more damage than that. Yeah, V's now moving out. 
He's got the upgrade. He's now got that oil, that oil. He's going to get that oil as well. There's the drunk slash dead guy. Massive tech RPG push inside of Pepsi's base. Looking a little bit dangerous. That TNT, though, is going to probably explode some of his own units if it dies. Didn't die, though. And actually, Pepsi might have to go back. Most of the stuff has been cleared up, though, from the GLA. Like, he's only got a few technicals left. A few RPGs left. Those Vs are going back for Pepsi. Like, he knows he's ahead. He's got artillery platforms. He's got oils. The only thing that's dangerous is just... This little push on his base, but I even think that's clear, um, clearable just by these few units. I don't think he even needs to come back anymore. But he's just playing it 100% safe. Looking pretty comfortable, I think, for Pepsi. Saying that, though, the stealth is on the palace. Extra supply for Pepsi up in the top left. This really should have been denied, honestly. At least a worker should have scouted this or something. Can't just let the uh, USA have a whole corner to himself. Tunnel gets cleared. There's a technical coming in. I think he might be going for a dozer hunter or a TNT. But there's still a dozer hunter up. Uh, sorry, a dozer up in the top left building a strap. Pepsi's focusing on this. It's a tech RPG. But it's not going to achieve anything. Pepsi now moving out with all of his Vs. Even if he runs into a tunnel at this point, he's got so many Vs and the toe upgrade. That he can just push. There's a few buggies out for Basie. The only remaining oil is going to be killed. The only remaining civilian one, I mean. Pepsi's collecting down to the bottom right. And Bayzy once again getting pushed back. Buggies don't have that much success when there's a difference in terrain. Here, they, they might not look like it, but there is a tiny bit of a hill. So there's always a risk that your buggies are going to go closer. It's very, very annoying, actually. I mean, if you just look at all the map, Pepsi is absolutely everywhere. Personally, what I think he should be doing is upgrading to a second or even third war factory and just uh, making loads of MTVs. Maybe a few will have missile defenders inside of it. And just brute force attacking into this. Yes, you will lose some of the Vs on the, um, on the attack from the buggies. But ultimately, as long as you're pushing him back, even if you're having a negative trade-off, which you will probably by, by attacking... But you, meanwhile, have all the economy in the world, so. Uh, there's no buggy ammo upgrade as well, which is a little bit disappointing to see. There's only three workers collecting there. That one's mined out now for Basie. Super weapon in play now for Pepsi. I just don't know what the airfield is for. Actually, it's for vanilla raptors, which is good, actually. If you split fire here, you should get two for free. Only goes for one. It's going to force him to make quads, then your Vs might have more success. You can see how um, 
Pepsi knows what he's doing and how he won that best of one tournament. John McKell will get detected here by the uh, the strat. Still no worker sho shoes and still no buggy ammo upgrade, despite having that many buggies out. As soon as the palace starts, fin sorry, finishes, you need to build a fake market straight away and then try and upgrade it straight away. Pepsi now moving out down the bottom right. Buggies finish off a fire base up in the top left. Three minutes until the particle cannon will fire. Nobody has their refinery. A tank comes in and finishes off the market. But did he? He didn't even squeeze out buggy ammo upgrade. He got worker shoes, best upgrade in the game. But without buggy ammo, though, it's going to be a lot trickier to deal with the V's. But the V's are currently just chilling. He's trying to finish off this refinery. But the vanilla raptors are coming in, picking off the buggies. Looking kind of nice from Pepsi. One more V gets picked off. V's now moving into the main base. Arms dealer there going to get picked off. He could get advanced training since he's floating 10k. And supply lines he's got. Supply lines increases the amount of money you're collecting by 10%. So from oils as well, it goes from $200 to $20. Since you hold two oils currently. It's a nice little bit of an increase. And also your Chinook rather than dropping $600, they drop $660. Just make money out of thin air. Ooh, he got the cancel there. As well as uh, getting several buggies. Vanilla Raptors taking some damage, but mostly survive. Yeah, Basie is uh, is dead here. There's three particles out. His second supply is getting killed. And Basie has been defeated. Yeah, pretty good performance there from Pepsi. I don't think at any point he was any real danger. Early on, he got TNT'd. But apart from that, it was pretty solid and convincing win. 4-1 there for Pepsi. Okay, jumping into the next one up in the top right. We have the GLA style for the blue player. That is Pepsi. And down at the bottom left, we've got the red USA laser. Which is Basie 655. Okay, two supplies for both players. Straight into a real arms dealer for Pepsi. A lot of players do a fake arms dealer nowadays in order to rush out more tunnels and then upgrade that like a second later. Those are dropped from Basie. Going to try and stop this forward tunnel. It does get the den deny, but the first unit will be a technical with RPGs and a worker probably. So that is always going to get finished. But what you do gain is you know where the technical is going to come from then. Because if that finishes, you don't know necessarily if the technical is going to come from here or whatever. But if it, if you force him to go there, then you know it's coming from the from the middle. Okay, two workers killed so far. Worker does finish here. I think he just literally walked there. Dozer is going to go for some harassment again. Nice box from Basie in his base. The interesting, there's no TNT there to prevent this Dozer from doing any damage. Because if you just had it there on guard, this wouldn't be necessarily happening. First tentacle from Pepsi enters the base. There's the TNT dropped off and he gets himself a V. That's uh, kind of nice. Ah. 
Hmm. Surely he can finish that off. I don't think he wants his V to move slowly, so he's bringing in the other one, which is fine, but... Technical's now moving in again for Pepsi. Hmm. Interesting attack. Only two RPGs. He's expanding to a third pretty quick. So counter-attack here from Pepsi. Comes him and take RPGs. Takes out the Dozer. Is he now going to force Basie back with these fully loaded Vs that he's got? I don't know if he'll be able to handle this, actually. We're just making laser tanks and uh, missile defenders. Is, is it necessary to come back here? Comes back regardless. Clears things up. But now I think he should head across the map and uh, do the maximum damage now whilst he's got those uh, those Vs needs to still deal with the super tech. Losing Chinooks here on the right. And now moving into the main base. Um, arms dealer tunnel in front of it is being built a little bit slow there. Super tech still running around the base. Supply has gone down there for Pepsi. These continue their rampage, and it's going to be tricky to stop this because they are pretty full. Tunnel gets cleared. All these workers are going to get stopped. Needs to preserve these Vs as well as he can. These Vs are mopping up and uh, doing some good damage inside of the base. And, uh, yeah, it's actually it's September 2023 20, now. Uh, this game is 20 years old. Because it came out in September 2003. Technical's now moving in. Trying to trap these Vs, but they're very fully loaded. And the more these fights go worse for Pepsi, the more missile defenders get veterancy inside of these Vs. That V needs to be careful. Just move it back. Uh, evac it if it's at any risk. There's no need to lose five missile defenders inside of there. But still, though, these Vs are wrecking things. Uh, tunnel has gone down. Supply going down. This has been cancelled. And the arms dealer is now getting camped. This is a fake back here. And Pepsi's in danger, actually. He's got a new arms dealer down at the bottom, right? Only collecting on four workers there. Only collecting on four workers there, although he's making more because it's a recent supply. Technical gets the run over on so many MDs. I think Pepsi, uh, yeah, he's struggling a bit here because he's, uh, all of his main buildings are dead. Arms dealer has to be sold, but he only has a barracks now, unless I'm missing something. I think he only has a barracks. I mean, is it, unless he places something now, he's at risk of getting kicked. Ooh. Okay, he, he quits anyway. Maybe, maybe that tunnel was the last building. I don't know. But yeah, nice win there from Basie. Scoreline now is 4-2. Okay, jumping into the next one. We've got the blue player, China Vanilla, up at the top of Forest of Camelot by TK Leo. This is Pepsi.
Uh, down at the bottom left, you've got the Jelly Vanilla for the red player. This is Basie655. Remember, Pepsi only needs one more because it's the best of nine. If he gets the five, then Basie's eliminated. So Basie definitely needs to win this one. He also needed to win the last one, which he did. And he needs to win the next one after this, even if he wins this one. And the one after that to win the whole set, if that makes any sense whatsoever. <laughs> Probably not. Real arms dealer again from the GLA rather than a fake one. I mean, it. if you're going for a super fast TNT, a real arms dealer is good because you you might be able to get it out a second quicker. Um, if he's not going for a super fast TNT, I think that should be a fake and you should be prioritizing tunnels here and here. Okay, TNT straight down the middle, gets stopped, only loses $200 though. China is going for an oil cap, and interestingly he's got a bunker next to his oil with mines on it already. Red Guard has denied this tunnel from being built. It's got a worker here though. Kills the Red Guard harder than the tree. Red Guard captured the oil is probably going to be denied as well. Yep. Uh, get straight down the middle. Might be able to stop that rebel. Extra supply from Bayzy 655 down in the bottom right. Tentacle runs straight into a gas. It's a tech RPG though. He turns around and fights it. Uh, need to keep the tentacle alive. Even if you lose the RPGs, better to keep the tentacle alive. But yeah, bad micro there from Bayzy, I think, really. Five workers, five workers. Extra supply built for Basie. Now pushing in with the quads. There is a helix out for Pepsi. Full tunnel been deployed from Basie. I really like this. This is how GLA should play. When, when you're pushing with the quads and you're gaining ground, bring a worker so you can secure the area and also reinforce it at light speed. Like, literally, put your units in there and reinforce from here. So that's looking very, very good for Basie. And Pepsi's got to be panicking a little bit here. Because, uh... He doesn't want this to go to a decider, and it's, it would be getting close if Baze is able to win this one fourth, uh, and make it 4 3 in total. It's two helixes out, but there's so many quads and RPGs. The helixes definitely don't want to engage that right now. Gats need to be in the most amazing line, but so far one of them gets wasted, and the Gats need to always be still to do the maximum damage. They're moving a little bit too long there, and a helix is now coming in too soon. These quads are moving. The quads and the gats do maximum damage when they're still. You need to be still. Uh, but either way, there's still too many quads. Helixes both go down. And that's actually looking very, very bad for Pepsi. I think he's lost this particular game. More and more quads coming in from Basie. He's not messing around. Literally with a quad spam. Uh, that power's going to get picked off. It's going to damage all of this stuff. Pepsi been defeated. That was a really quick game. Fast and ferocious there. Basie extends his wins to three, but he's still behind by one at 4 3 for Pepsi. Okay, jumping into the next one. Basie closing the gap. We have uh, down in the bottom left, we have Pepsi with the blue GLA vanilla. And then up in the top right, we have the red China vanilla for Basie 655. China against GLA. 
it's definitely going to be hard for the China. He's going for two supplies, double war factory. And he's going for a truck rush down in the bottom right position. We probably will be able to stop this worker. But using these trees, though, as camouflage, you can hide a worker in them. Easily. Look, you see, sometimes it's basically invisible, so... And without, without the radar, which the CC has been sold, without the radar, the, the worker would not be uh, findable. But how does he know there's a truck coming in now he does? Only three workers collected on his second, which is bad for Pepsi. He was only collecting on three on his main on Farmlands of the Fallen, by the way. Truck is going to give some free veterans to here and some free scrap. Mm, that should have been scrap denied at the bare minimum. Flame is straight down the middle. Basie has to be 100% focused here. He's got the weaker army. And he needs to win to force the decider. If he doesn't scrap the night out, oh, he does. Because he doesn't want to face the super tech. Technical round the back. Uh, GLA, in my view, it's getting a bit too much map presence. It's got a tunnel here. Tunnel there. Tentacle in the back just being annoying. Flamer is on the case, though. That's bad from Basie. Just letting it go. You just get basically gift him and gifting him a super tech there. Uh, a bit weird here from Pepsi. Like, why didn't he kill that one? Get some scrap. Oh, what's he doing? He's got a super tech. It's game over. Basie is eliminated from the World Series as far as I'm concerned. Like, why did he not continue to chase that with the Flamer? Why did he not get mines on that? Why did he not move the trucks out of the way? He's just gifting him a super tech. And, and the, the control from Pepsi was even a bit weird. Like, the way he was targeting both trucks. Like, why not get one, get a grenade tech, and then you finish the other one faster? Uh, unless he was scared of the splash damage, killing himself or something. I don't know. But there's a lot of quads RPGs out. He just needs to drop down loads and loads of tunnels now. And then harass with the super tech. Oh, Basie's just done a far good flame all and flamed down two of his own gats. The pressure is on now. This is what the World Series does to you. Artillery platform down at the bottom right. It's going to be captured. Super tech has been loaded up with RPGs. This is deadly. Yeah, Basie, maybe he should have opened with oils. Super tech doesn't even need to use RPGs. Just wrecks, uh, wrecks the gats there. Basie now getting himself one oil. Weird he's getting that one first before that one. Like, that's the safe one. <laughs> that's the close to one. Looks like he's going to get it anyway. But this super tech is coming in. It might be wasted here. Yeah, it's going to get wasted. E oh, it oh, very close. Very, very close. Though. Okay, a lot of quads pushing now in the middle. I think... Picking off that oil and going back, Pepsi would be a good decision. He's getting more and more control all up in the top. It's kind of based on a design of uh, Sand Scorpion, this, the way you've got your three entrances, your three choke points, but then plus you've got this bridge that connects. Like a, so it's now like a figure of eight, basically, isn't it?
Okay, Battle Bus with Pepsi. ECM joins the party, though. It's going to deflect the uh, missiles. The, the ECM for China and the ECM for Tank, if I'm not mistaken, behave differently. The Tank one is, like, more aggressive. It will automatically try to disable anything in sight. Whereas the China one, and I think the other um, ECMs for the other factions, they will just stand idle and deflect the missiles. I personally might prefer it if it had two modes. If you can put it on aggressive or if you can put it on defense mode. Uh, Battle bus risks the mines. He's still going to get the prop, though. He needs to force fire there. Yeah, he is. Okay, he gets the prop. Uh, Overlord, ECM, Gat, and Flamer army here for the China Vanilla versus these tunnels up in the top. But Pepsi doesn't care. He's just going to push out. He's so going to sacrifice this area. He's going to lose that scaffold, I think. But pushing with quads straight down the middle with the prop gone. There's pretty much nothing you can make from that war factor that's going to contend with this. So probably has to bring his army back. I mean, he's clearing this position anyway, so... Yeah, Battle Bus still alive there. You could evac some of the guys there and just start hitting the power. Well, whilst that quad attack was going on. Also, waiting for Jarman to rock up. Uh, there is a market in play. He does have worker shoes. Blamus Bay is now making its way into the base. Quads moving in to engage the Overlord. I think if he just teams up on that Overlord, though. He can still win it. He's picking off all the ECMs first and then going for the Overlord second. Flame is going to be stopped in the end, although has caused a bit of damage. Those are getting picked off. Overlord has cleared up a load of quads. But in the end... Oh! Oh my god, this fight. Oh my god, the Overlord. <laughs> Gets sniped in the end, but that Overlord is heroic. The guys inside of that... We'll be getting a promotion from uh, uh, Xi Jinping. <laughs> Took out so many quads. Okay, second war factor going up for Basie. Uh because the, the first one got killed by the quads, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, yeah, Battle Bus has been cleared up now. That uh, oil's dead. Uh he's still on the overlord. He doesn't get the subliminal messaging though, which is what the China already had. But he's got battle buses with Jarman, he's collecting from there, he's collecting all at the bottom, and he's got um oils scared. This is unfortunately Basie 655 going out of the World Series. Um He's only on one supply with China Vanilla trapped in the corner. He might be able to fight it out for a few more minutes, but that's all he's going to be able to do. Maybe we need to go Helixes from the beginning or something. Helixes are pretty good here um, over the water and stuff. But you could have gone uh, oils and helix, or you could have gone war factory airfield and then try and drop a flamer into the enemy base and then go to helixes from there, something like that. But I'm just waiting for that to get sniped now. Surely there's a Jean McKellen here. Don't know where he is. Surely he's somewhere to be seen. Battle bus gets disabled basically inside of the tunnel. Uh, that Overlord's not gone inside of the tunnel. I don't know if the Battle Bus is blocking it, but it gets disabled as well. John Miguel has been detected. Overlord putting pressure on the front. John Miguel does snipe the uh, the Overlord. Now pop from the GLA. Oh, he stopped him from going inside. I think if the GLA just engages this now, I think that's I think that's a done deal. 
Oh, yeah, I mean, he's got more overlords now than the China. This one's going to get picked off, though. Skidstorm is out, and Bayzy now knows his time is up. And yes, this one is in balance, but he should have won some of the earlier games in the set. In the end, there, Pepsi goes through 5 3. GG. And well played, and good luck to him in the next round. Let me know what you thought of this down in the comments. GG, and I'll see you in the next one.